where did Christianity come from? Did it just come up out of the thin air from the abyss, like some miracle, these ideas that no one's ever heard before, and some guy named Jesus who literally was God incarnate came down and told us all these things no one's ever heard before, ideas that no one's ever even thought of, then die on the cross as a as a martyr. And uh and did this does this does this just come out of the thin air? Today we're gonna show you that these ideas did not come out of thin air. In fact, not only are they drawing from the Judeo biblical Old Testament world, but they're also heavily borrowing from what we would call pagan sources. The Sibyl. And I'm going to show you today with my guest, Dr. Amon, how the Sibylline books converted over time from polytheistic rituals through the Jewish Sibyl and into what then became purely Christian text. Stay tuned. Hit that intro. You need to go right now and subscribe to Lady Babylon. Now, I'm if you like my channel and you like my approach to these texts, you now I, I can get real deep into this stuff. And I, I'm all I'm all about the Orphic mysteries and the Eleusinian mysteries, and you know, going back to the sources and getting into the the roots of all this stuff. But that I just scratched the surface. If you want to go deep into the inner mysteries. You know, you're seeking that initiation into the rites. You're not just looking at them and reading them from afar. You want to get into this stuff. You want to be that. Go and subscribe to Lady Babylon. He's blowing up. He's going twice. He's going uh, live twice a week, going deep and showing. He's a Greek expert, classical Greek as well, uh, uh, and to be more exact. And he brings up these texts that no one, no one even talks about or even heard of. And brings them and resurrects them, brings them to the forefront, and then dissects them on his channel live. No one is doing what he's doing. One place, that's it, Lady Babylon. So, welcome, Dr. Amon. How are you doing today? Hey, thanks for that great introduction, Neil. It is uh, fantastic to be here. And for those of you who are in, sitting in the audience, I was able to hear an outline of Neil's presentation here. Um, it's good stuff, man. This is graduate level work. So you should be proud of your work, bro. Nice job. I appreciate that. Yeah. So without further ado, we're going to get into what are these Sibylline books? Because you might know Christians, a lot of Christians, especially the Orthodox Christians, they know that the Christian Sibylline oracles, they know what these are. They, they consult them. They talk about Ar Gog and Magog and Armageddon. And uh, those are the prophecies from the Christian Sibylists. And they still consult them today and read them and talk about how Muhammad was the Baphomet. And these are all Christian ideas that are still floating around there. But how many of them know that before Christianity was even on right, anyone's radar, Sibylline books were consulted by Roman relig religion cultists as well. And they came out of that tradition. There, was, there were Sibyls all over the empire. But you have these Sibylline books that were guarded by the Vestal Virgins. And they would be, they would, they would use them and it was sort of propaganda prophecy all types of different they would consult these books and for example in 2 204 BCE 
I could be off by a couple of years. Two, let's say around 200 BCE, the Romans were at war against the Macedonians and um, and the Carthaginians as well. They were, they were at war on different fronts. And one of their prophecies was to go and get Magna Mater from Phrygia. This is a famous god that people would travel from all over the world to go and to go and visit and give offerings to. The Romans said, we need to have that in Rome. The Sibylline books is what told them to go do that, according to Livy, according to others. And this was a common thing that they would consult these books. The books would tell them, go import a god from a different land, bring it to Rome. And so that's what I want to really show the progression over time from the Sibyl. Any thoughts on that so far? I think you're dealing with Egeria right off the bat. So people should know that back in Roman history, when there were still kings and Rome was just a city with huts. Um, at this time, there was a sibyl um, called Egeria. Yeah, and she transmitted to Numa, to Numa, um, who is a Sabine, right? They, she transmitted to him what would become the religion of Rome, right? And yeah. supposedly an outline of what was going to happen throughout their history, who they would fight, when they would fight them, very specific stuff. And she was a nymph. They called her a nymph. And that's where I'm coming in today is we're going to talk about that nymph um, and who that nymph is. And you're going to be surprised. Um, but yeah, Neil, I think you're on a, Ooh, I love it. Love the yeah. Roman flavor. Keep going, bro. So, you know, the Stibeline books from the I'm using it as a source, two different sources. James Charlesworth has a pseudopigrapha Old Testament text and included in here is all the Sibylline texts that they found from the Jewish sources, Jewish and Christian sources. And so and I also have the Christian, the straight up Christian Sibylline text that are from the 6th and 5th, 4th, 5th and 6th centuries after the Christian Christians basically take over the civil. But the the oldest, the second, going back to like the, the 2nd century BCE, before, like when it's, when, when it's just pagan and Jewish uh, people using these civil texts and consulting them, you have this prophecy of, you know, war and Rome, like you were mentioning. And uh, like a lot of the, language that's being thrown around there um like here's the oracle against rome you will be among mortals like cosmic destruction but you also have in these texts or uh a lot of what you would call pagan terminology you know the name is by the earth shaker anyone who hears who hears that term earth shaker that's poseidon there's only one person who has that title earth shaker poseidon and it even says in the top, from the Erythrean Sibyl, there will be almost also be immediately assigned for the fertile Phrygia when the abominable race of Rhea. They're there's no, they're not like keeping the keep these gods out of the text. No, they're not real gods. No, no, they're like, no, that's these are the race, this is the race of Rhea. This is the people who worship Kaibali from Phrygia. And they're acknowledging that in these texts. I think that's fantastic. I think it's fantastic. What it's hard. To you know? It's hard to tell the difference, Neil. It's hard to tell the difference between that Rhea as a Christian goddess and as a pagan goddess. Those terms run together. Linguistically, they run together. This is brilliant, brother. Keep going. Keep going. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, you're fine. That was, that was a good point. And um, there's a lot of text. There's a lot of talk about ages. There's a new age coming. Uh, even Suetonius. I'm sorry, uh, Plutarch, in his life of Sola, was talking about how learned Etruscans declared that a portent signified the advent of a new age and a new cosmic order. They said that there are eight ages altogether, each with different customs and ways of life, and that the god has assigned each of these ages a definite number of years, which is accomplished by the revolution of the great year. Whenever one great year ends, another begins. They said a remarkable portent appears either at, on earth or in the sky to make it clear to those who have studied and looked into such matters that men have a different kind and modes of different life. So 
this is a thing like this is a understood thing universal throughout all these religions that there's these ages different ages coming up and the sibylline books really go through these ages and they go through the times of caesar they go through the times of you know th there's there's even they even have romulus and remus in here let me pull that up real quick the one that has romulus and remus don't forget the sibyl is the daughter of noah right yeah, explain that real quick, because this is huge, because they're... Th okay, yeah, go ahead. Sp explain that real quick. Yeah, she is the one who, through the line of Deucalion, preserves that righteousness, that place, that voice. And so she presents herself in the oracles, especially the, the sibling oracles, the early ones. Three and five, in my opinion, are the, are the most classical Neil's talking about a transition from purely classical to this kind of Judeo-Christian approach. And um, those early ones, three and five, those are, to me are the strongest. And they will still contain references that are cross-used by the Christians. M remember, people, the S Christians were first called by the pagans who thought they were atheoi. They said they were subilistes. They were sibilists. Right. They were sibilists, yeah. And uh, that's and that's and that's the thing is when Julian the Apostate was the emperor, they didn't. That's what Julian Apostate calls them. He just calls them Sibylists. Celsus too. Celsus is saying, yeah, their religion is basically the Sibyl. It's basically, they're just they're, you know they're Sibylists. He 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 kind of kind of calls them a degradation of it though. Celsus is like they're degradating the the, the secret rights of the Sibyl, and he. They're he makes They're it clear oracle. that it's not the Sybil, it's a degradation of the Sybil, yeah. which I happen to agree with. They're um, oracle mongers. They're oracle mongers. Now they're trying to use the oracles for their own benefit, he says. Yeah. And here, yeah, and here you know, almost is, like there's a pure art and there's a there's a tainted form of it. And the Christianity was tainting that pure uh, art in the in the minds of the of the of the people who lived the pagan life. Now, this is interesting because one of the earlier versions, right? One of the earliest versions of it, we have this outline where it's going through all the different ages. Talks about how Cyrus will rise up. Talks about how, and I can, you can, like I said, if you want, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to be able to show all of them because it's going to take hours. You can find it all in here. James Charles, this, this, is, this is literally a screenshot of this book. But it starts off with Cyrus. Cyrus, oh no, I'm sorry, it goes back even farther than that. I'm dumb. Talks about how the Tower of Babel will, will, will be built and then it will be everyone will be spread out across the earth. Talks about Egypt. The kingdom of Egypt will rise and be a great kingdom. The kingdom of Babylon will come after that and be a great kingdom. And it goes through all these different ages. And then it says, and then it starts getting into Alexander the Great will come, conquer the East. And then after Alexander the Great, Rome and it, then it, it brings you to Romulus and Remus. Like, wait a minute. Romulus and Remus? See? And so there, there's, no, there's no borders between religions in this time. There's no like, oh, we're, we're over here in Christian land, and we're not allowed to, to talk about Romulus and Remus or the Trojan War. No, they believe this stuff. The Trojan War. Look, it says right here, now you, wretched Phrygia, do I bewail piteously. For on you will come captivity from Greece, which subdues horses in terrible war. One of these will be a mighty warrior, will be a king. For the sake of his brother, he will perform most evil deeds. Those They will destroy famous walls of Troy, of the Phrygians. When the son of Kronos, for twice five revolving years, fulfills the murderous deeds of war. A great man from Zeus, a king, will have the name. So there is no... There's no separation from Homer and, and Hesiod. There's no separation. The, the text, and, and you can almost argue that the Old Testament is a uh, euhemerization of these texts. Where these, they're taking these, these daemons and, and lower gods and putting them as making them people, basically. And you mentioned Noah. So one of the sibling texts right here says that Saturn represents Noah, or the sons of Noah, maybe Saturn, Titan, Iapetus, 
The flood is described 40 days. This is where the Gentiles tradition and the rain 40 days, talking about uh, Deucalion's flood. This is from Hesiod. And then the, it says the Arameans are derived from the Phrygians and spoke the same language, comprehended it as, great, as old Phrygia. This is where the, the Ark landed, supposedly, right? So they're all, it's all, this is all one thing. This is not like, there's no separation. There's no like borders between these religions. And it, so the Saturn thing's interesting because you also have Eusebius later on talking about how Kronos, he says right here, Kronos, the Phoenicians call Elus, who was a king of the country and subsequently after his decree was deified as the star Saturn, had a nymph of that country named Anobret, an only begotten son whom they on this account called Yedud, the only begotten being so-called among the Phoenicians. And he's citing Sanko Nathan for this, an old Phoenician priest, as you see in the second paragraph. And his translation of Sanko Nathan about the Phoenician alphabet says concerning the reptiles and venomous beasts will contribute no service to mankind. So right away we're seeing this imagery of serpents being evil and wicked, right? Whereas before that, the serpent was a symbol of power and, and knowledge and divinity. Yeah, and you notice you notice that that serpent is right in there in that cult, right? Yeah. They can't they can't be using the drugs and not um, make that a part of all the imagery, right? I love this passage, by the way. Look, and look at the, the last one. The, the yeah, last one is the nature then of the dragon and of the serpents. Tothus himself regarded as divine, and so at, again after him did the Phoenicians and Egyptians for this animal was declared to be by him that be all reptiles most full of breath and fiery in consequence of which it also ex exerts an unsurpable swiftness by means of its breath without feet or in hands or any other of the external members which other animals make by their movements it also exhibits forms of various shapes and in its progress makes spiral leaps as swift as it chooses and so it just it, i don't know this is this, there's so much going on here there's so much like cultic language and symbolism being thrown around here he then says that in the next page the next page over he says the mysteries of oh he says the phallus derived as a symbol of generation to those who are being initiated the into the into the adult adulterous art and they pay a piece of money to her as lovers to a harlot the mysteries of dio and, and the armorous embraces of zeus with demeter his mother and the wrath of, I know not what to call her now, his mother or wife Demeter, on account of which wrath they say she was called Brimo, the supplications of Zeus and the drink of gall, the plucking out of the victim's heart and the unspeakable deeds, these things the Phrygian celebrate in honor of Addis and Kybele and the Corybantus. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait, just for the benefit of the creeps in the audience like me, what are they doing in this riot? They're drinking the gall. Okay, I've seen the gall of the echidna. These are that's the specific drug. So they're drinking the gall and plucking out the victim's heart. Wait, where do we get the where do we get the heart in here? And what does this have to do with that breath of fire? Right? This is all related, people. That breath of fire is all right. related. That's why people went to see Medea, because she could do it through the serpent, right? So yeah. okay. Fantastic. And it's all for the celebration of Addis and Sibylle. You saw that, Neil. Now we can't deny it. We can't deny that, that Sibylle and Addis are those, is, you know, the heart. And notice when the Sibyl says, go get and bring Sibylle here, right? Yes. Notice, that's what, that was the whole point of what I was going to say is the, the Sibylline books are the, are the actual books that told her to go get her and bring her to Rome. Isn't that fascinating? You can't, you can't, you can't deny that's I mean, that, like, and you'll see, I'm going to show you because there's the later Sybilists are trying to like, trying to, I don't know how it's like, they're ashamed of their past. Cause there's, there's a sibling. There's a text that I'm going to show later on where the, the writer is saying, just ignore all the pagan sibling texts. They're, those are all, those are all fables. Who cares about those? I'm like what? You're just going to throw that out there. It's like, but anyways, let's, well, I'm going to build up to that. Cause I would really want to show this. He says that uh, they also have made up a story that Zeus, having torn off parts of a ram, 
brought and threw them into the lap of Dio, paying a fraudulent pen- penalty for his violence as though he had been parts of himself. The watchwords of this initiation, if set before you, merely for amusement, will I know stir your laughter, although you may not be willing to laugh because of the exposures. I ate out of the drum. This is the secret. This is what you say when you get initiated. I ate, and Clement of Alexandria writes about this too. I ate out of the drum and drank out of the cymbal. I danced the Kiro, Kiro, Kiroporia. Is that what it says? Yeah. I slipped into the bridal chamber. Are not these watchwords in outrage? Are not the mysteries a farce? But what if I shall add the rest of the story? Demeter has a child. And her, ch- and her daughter grows up again. This Zeus, who begat her, seduces his own daughter, Farafata. After her mother, Deo, forgetting his former crime, he approaches her in the form of a serpent. It is thus proved who he was. According to the Sabazian mysteries, the sign for this who are initiated, the god gliding over the breast, and this is a serpent, drawn over the breast of those who are initiated a proof of the incontinence incontinence of zeus parafata also gives birth to a son in the form of a bowl so you have this this cultic imagery that they're throwing out there of these pagan rites right that that whole god and the breast thing is huge neil because that that's how they identified people who were following the orphic mystery was through that symbol. And people have argued, I've, I've heard classicists argue about what exactly that means. What is the God in the breast, right? Was it some kind of mark? Was it some kind of indication? Some kind, I don't know, they flash hand signals, right? When you, that's what the classicists are trying to figure out. When you look at the drugs that are being used and how they're being used, it, the serpent in the breast makes a lot more sense. It's going to be those people whose eyes have been opened and they now see via that serpent vision, that reality via the communion. So, yeah. And I'm going to show you how Mary, Oh, uh, surprise. I'm going to show you how Mary does it. That exact thing right there. Gorgeous text. By the way, guys, these are gorgeous texts. You can't get, I love it because it shows you what there's that competing ideologies of religion happening in these times. And then he says this. This is, the, this, is what he, this is the last thing he says about this. He says, These are the secret mysteries of the Athenians. These are the things that Orpheus records. By the way, there's Christian Orphic text in this time where they're claiming Orpheus. And Orpheus is talking about, he actually, in one of the texts, I wish I had it with me. I, I can show it to people later, where it, the God's name of the Father God is Zeus. Jesus is like the son of Zeus in this, in this passage. Anyways, these are the things that Orpheus records, but I will set before you the very words of Orpheus that you may have the master of mysteries himself as a witness of the shamelessness. She spake and quick her flowing robes withdrawn, showed all the secret beauty of her form. The child, Yacus, laughing, stretched his hand to touch her tender breast, and Babo smiled. And two, the goddess smiled with cheerful thought. For some reason, this is a really important passage. And you you see it all. It's cited by so many writers in the ancient world. And took the shining bowl, which held held the draught. There is also a watchword of the Eleusinian mysteries. I already said this. I fasted. I drank the draught. I took from the chest. I finished, you know, obviously. Worthy, worthy rather, are the mysteries of Nyx and of Torchlight. And the great hearted or rather weak minded people of the Arestheidae, and also the Greeks, men of whom remain after, uh, I can't see that last part on my screen right now, but uh, after death, things that they took little for. Nice, so nice. Eusebius, isn't, Eusebius is like really getting into this stuff. And he's trying to, what he's trying to do here is he's trying to say that all these people who are looking for this divine child this divine soter child we found him guys stop looking he's here he's jesus he's trying to say that all these pagan mysteries that are all looking for this one thing are all pointing to jesus that's the whole point of this book it's called it's called the preparation for the gospel and then he's basically saying like you know all the stuff that plato wrote about all the stuff that pythagoras wrote about 
they're just looking for Christianity. Christianity is the answer to all this stuff. That's what he's trying. That's what he's trying to argue in here. But I just find it's fascinating. They they have to they have to go through the the old ways to get to this. You know what I'm saying? I totally know what you're saying. There was some dirty stuff in the third to last in that very last one you put up there. Yeah. Um, yeah. Bring that up again if you can, Neil, because there, the there's third, something. Which one? The um, that's just the, the last one. one you put up there. The last. The this last. One? Yeah. There you go. Look at this. She spake. And quicker flowing robes withdrawn. You said this one is super important. It is. It's all over the place. Yeah. And it's hugely in, in a cult symbol, right? They talk about this passage for its cult symbol, right? And what is this doing? Balbo is exposing herself, right? And quick her flowing robes withdrawn. She's showing the child her secret beauty. She's showing the child her secret beauty. And that child is Iachos. That Iachos is what you are when you are in the right. Euripides shows us this, right? Technically, it's a shout. Yao. Right? And just to, just to highlight how important this is. Yeah. Just to show you that when archaeologists are digging all over Greece, especially in Athens, they find these, these, these idols of women exposing themselves that's babo so this was a so just kind of, sort of like how you have with um priapus like their charms basically they would hold they would have these in front of their houses you know there's a power to that exposure right and notice in, in this part of the mystery is watch what happens with the kid can we get that text again neil yeah yeah to touch you know so the kid extends his hands to touch her breasts right and balbo smiled then to the goddess smile with cheerful thought that goddess that they're making smile is demeter who yep. it, who is returning back to a happy place from her from the abduction of her daughter right she's looking for the abduction looking for her daughter right then they took the shining bowl which held the draft remember the only thing that she's consuming at the time demeter is that opium right she's drinking that opium the texts specifically say that so this is a very practical right right that has to do with a child and the exposure that brings the the um new age right then there's a new ruler in the underworld right she's a queen it's the only reason demeter doesn't walk away from everything Right, it's because that idiot who witnessed it said, "You know, she, she's a great queen." Anyway, that wonderful passage, Neil. They thought that was hugely important in antiquity. Oh yeah, this was like a this was a super important ritual from in Athens. And by the way, notice how there is no there's no epistle to the Athenians. Christian Athens was holding steadfast to their rights as the rest of the Greek world was converting to Christianity. The Athenians were the last ones to. To stay like where you know it's it's just interesting how that is, you know. Yeah, and it's interesting to read the to watch the history of the Romans succumb to Christianity. It, that that to me is amazing. It's sad, and it so whenever a modern Christian tells you everything in our society is built of no no no, you guys trashed another society. Well, this th this was actually written about by one of the civils that said that Rome was going to fall because of this. And in response to that, late, like centuries later, somebody was commenting on that. And I have the text here. It's from another. Let's see. Where is it? He says, uh, woe is me. This is sibling oracles. Talk about the fall of Rome. I shall see the day in which the unfortunate unfor to the O Rome most to all Italy. The soldiers imagine with anger him who ascends the Trojan chariot uh, who came from Asia. Talking about Aeneas, you know what I mean? There's all the references to the Trojan War and how, you know, Rome is basically this founding city founded by Aeneas. And then on the bottom, the person writes, the Sibyl, like the other poets, supposes the law that day that Rome fell, but none can think that will be alive then. Therefore, such a fiction of former Sibyls ought to not be objected against their oracles. The Trojan chariot. Like, notice how he's, he's ignore he's, talking shit about the former sibyls because they're because of their because it's pagan you know what i mean he's like just ignore it 
Just ignore the, the Sybils from the previous ages. They're a bunch of pagans. They don't know what they're talking about. But um, I wanted to set this up for this. Because he, after Romulus and Remus, we get these oracles against Rome. And then they start talking about Nero. Let's see, which one do I got? I got a bunch of these different Nero texts. Let's see. We'll start this one. I don't know which one's in order. It's just an, against, an oracle against the Gauls. Then there's an oracle against Ethiopians. Then it says the return of Nero. You too, Corinth, bewail the mournful destruction within you. For when three sister fates, spinning with twisted threads. By the way, that's kind of a pagan thing, sister fates, right? Totally. Yeah. Beyond the bank of the... Is you don't hear that in church. They're talking about the sister fates. Like, they're not talking about that. That's This is old terminology being used by Christians. Anyways, uh, who formerly cut off the rock with ductile bronze. He will destroy and ravage your land also, as is decreed. For to him, God gave strength to perform things like no previous king, one of all the kings. For first of all, cutting off the roots from the three heads, mightily will blow. He will give them to others to eat. Whew. So they will eat the flesh of the parents of the impious king. For the murder and terrors are in store for all men because of the great city and righteous people, which is preserved throughout everything which providence held in special place. And then it says, um, let's see, where do you go? This is also about Nero in the same book. The career of Nero and his flight to the east. The poets will bewail thrice wretched Greece when a great king of Rome, a godlike man from Italy, will cut the ridge of the isthmus. Him, they say, Zeus himself begot Lady Hera, playing at theatricals with honey sweet songs rendered in melodious voice. He will destroy many men and his wretched mother. He will flee from Babylon, a terrible and shameless prince whom all mortals and, mo and noble men despise. For he destroyed many men and laid hands on the womb. He sinned against spouses and was sprung from abominable people. See, a lot of people, th Christians do not like Rome, by the way. They do not like Rome. Call them abominable people. He will come to the, Med to the Medes, the Medes and the kings of the Persians, those whom he first desired to whom he gave glory. Lurking with these, by the way, it was it was well known that Nero was well connected with the Persian satraps. He had a lot of uh, allies over there. That's why they were so afraid of him fleeing from Rome and going to the east to set up a new army and come back. This was they thought this was actually going to happen. So it says he seized the divinely built temple, talking about Jerusalem, and burned the citizens and peoples who went into it, men whom I rightly praised. For on his appearance, the whole creation was shaken and kings perished and those in whom sovereignty remained destroyed a great city and righteous people. Notice how the, Zeus and Hera are in here like it's no big deal. Zeus and Hera. Well, imagine a Christian. Imagine, imagine going to church today. I don't care what your denomination is. Imagine Baptist, whatever, Catholic. Imagine that the pastor was like, ah, I wonder what Zeus thinks about all this. Oh, you know, let's ask Hera what she thinks about this. <laughs> it doesn't happen anymore. Those are they're, they're, they don't exist. the 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 way religion is now, those these gods are they're they're fables, they're fiction, they're they're myths. They don't exist. But in this time period, these gods existed still. They were demons. Some even thought Zeus was Yahweh. Some thought he was Saturn. There's different ideas floating around there. Like I mentioned, how uh, San Codiatha says the Phoenicians call El Saturn. And I thought it was, an, and so a little little um, point on that. There's another sibling text. I'm trying to find where it is. It's in here somewhere where they laugh. At, they're basically making fun of Bacchus. Let's see. Is this the one? No. Here it is. Here it is. Okay. This is interesting. Mortals pour libations of wine as if to a thirsty God getting drunk to no purpose for useless idols. I have no need of your sacrifice or libation or polluted burnt offerings or most hated blood, for they will do these things in the memory of kings and tyrants for dead demons as if they were heavenly beings performing godless destruction worship. Godless destructive worship. Godless ones also call their images gods. 
band so you could see you could see how this this uh judeo christian mindset is you know formulating against these other pagan rites right godless ones call their images gods abandoning the creator thinking to have all hope and life from them trusting in dumb and speechless things with evil result they are ignorant of good end now i thought this was interesting i wanted to refute this real quick because number one uh exodus literally admits like you, you're calling him a thirsty god but on the other hand you have a god that says i'm a jealous god <laughs> he literally just says it straight out i'm a jealous god so what's worse a thirsty god or a jealous god you know i just wanted to throw that out there real quick but that's beside the point because Nonus, the reason why the reason why I'm assuming this is about Bacchus is when we talk about when we read Nonus. Nonus in his says that the minstrels have another older report that the once on earth fruitful Olympian Ecor flowed down from the heavens and brought forth wine from the Bacchic grape. The pine you know what, you, hang on, hang on. Don't miss it. You know what Ecor is? No, what is it? That Ichor is the life substance of the god. Wow. That's amazing. And then the pine shook by Boreas, drew her branches near the vine-clad cluster and whirled about the sweet-smelling branches bathed in blood. So, and then he goes on and says, where is it? It says no, that. I, I have to just say, you had a verb in there. You had a Greek verb in there that's ololudzo. That is that cry that I keep saying when you yell hallelujah in church yes. today. When you uh, yell hallelujah, that's ololudzo. That's a pagan. That's a pagan word. And it's it the is. word for a woman in mourning and in birth. Ololudzo, specifically a female voice. Neil, do you think your audience has a problem with Judaism and Christianity springing from the same pagan font? I don't know if all of them do, but some of them might. But check this out, right? Because I can even prove that. Third century BCE, Alexandrian court poet, Callimachus, writes a hymn to Athena. And at the end of the hymn, he says, I probably can't see that. I'll just read it. Athena is coming. Receive the goddess. Receive her with prayers. You who are chosen, receive her rejoicing. Alleluia, goddess. Preserve Argos. In Inakos, Alleluia, Goddess. When you drive her out with horses, when you drive out with horses, Alleluia, Goddess. When you drive them back home, save the estate of the Danans forever. This is that's not a monotheistic text. That's a that's Athena. That's a, Athena's the symbol of polytheism. You know what I mean? She's the symbol of that. This is not. So and I just wanted to throw that out there. If you want to say that. This is later or something. It's not. This is that was a, this is an actual chant, and Nonus does use that in his Dionysica for for Bacchus. He does use that. But anyways, I wanted to show this part right here. It says that dark, sweet red wine is a symbol of the blood, the ichor of Dionysus, and therefore it is used in libation as a type of sacrifice, just as the Titanes ate of the body of Zagreus in a holy ritual. We partake of the essence of God by drinking the wine. We offer the wine to the gods and pour most of it to the ground. And then we share of his divinity by drinking some. This is how we honor and reenact the sacrifice of Dionysus. By doing so, we partake in the essence of the God and the essence of his father. Both the son and the father had the same essence, the divine aether. This is the true meaning of wine. Why? We make libations and ritual and drink of the wine. It is an awesome holy act. This is why Dionysus is the great god of wine and the grape. For the wine represents, it becomes the divine essence of the great Zephs himself. Maybe that's supposed to say Zeus? No? Oh, that's, 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 that's the Vav. Yeah. Modern Greeks do it. Yeah, that's, yeah, okay. Okay, cool. That's interesting. So you have this idea, and this is what I, this is why I wanted to show that because they're 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 mocking this in the Sibylline, in the Christians. This is the se second century Sibylline text. They're mocking it. Mortals pour libations of wine to a thirsty god, <laughs> and I'm just sitting there like you guys are laughing at a thirsty god. You have a jealous god, <laughs> and we know and we know who Yahweh is. Yahweh's not Yahweh's subordinate to the creator. Yahweh is 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 just a lesser 
He's a lesser god. He's he's a daemon. He's not the creator. He thinks he is. He's not. He's he's Man. subservient to Fanny's and Nick's. He's, he's a gang. He's isn't he really the gang leader? Isn't he? I mean, I heard Neil. There was a multi-dimensional arrest warrant out on Jehovah, and you know this is why. He, <laughs> this is rebel. why. Yeah, no, this is why he fled to the um, the jail that we now call our existence, right? Our dimension happens to be the lowest. It's like the place where all the scumbags hang out, right? So, yeah, that's what the Chaldeans were teaching. Remember, right. that's behind the Magus. That, that look at the world is behind the Magus. Anyway. Um, no, but that's important because when, you, when Matthew's writing that the Magi are coming to find the, yeah. the, the Messiah, he's... Yeah. He's including that. He's, in, he's saying that the, even the Magi are, 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 know this is the real deal. Yeah. But, but Yahweh, we know who Yahweh, we know your roots, dude. You, you, don't, you, don't, you don't scare us. We know where you came from. You know you're, you're just one of those lesser gods. You're, you're, you were the state god of, of Jerusalem, just like all the other state gods of all these other cities. Nothing what? special happening. You couldn't you couldn't stop the Assyrians from raiding your city. You couldn't stop the Romans from raiding your city. You couldn't stop anyone from raiding your city. You're not all powerful. You you, you admit it yourself when you come in the garden. Adam, where are you? Adam, oh, oh you you ate from the tree. Chucks. I didn't want you to do that. Wait, what? You couldn't control that situation, dude? You couldn't control that situation? Yeah, right. I would never. I would never give in to that. Jehovah is the Mets. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, seriously, seriously. What, um, what about this God and about his personality? Because I heard, Neil, that he's a rapist. I heard that Jehovah is a rapist and his son was arrested with a naked boy. Right. So I want to establish like some kind of type here for this God, because we have the Virgin Mary. Right, we have the Virgin Mary, and it's written about in the Sibylline books, by the way. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right, because what is she doing? People need to know. People need to know when that angel comes, when Gabriel comes, and he's like, "Hey, bro, you know who's, what's going to happen?" Right, it's creepy. Those of you who believe the believe the fairy tale and haven't looked at the text, it's actually very creepy. He doesn't just say. Um, because and even the angel has to calm her down. Because the first thing the angel says is, Hey, bro, uh, you're hot. <laughs> God finds you hot. Where's right? this? <laughs> bring up, my, bring, bring, first bring up my first text. Bring up my right. first text. Here it is. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, an angel was sent out in six months, right? And his name is Gabriel, right? Sent out from God to a city of Galilee the name of which is Nazareth. And by the way, I was in Nazareth for a while. I love staying in Nazareth. Um, interestingly enough, I stayed in a convent. Right? I lived there for a year, so I lived across the way for a year, but I stayed in a convent in Nazareth. And that was the place that the nun watched me take a shower. I didn't let her know that she was watching me, right? that I knew it, but I gave her a great show. And that was one of those moments that you have when you're following the devil to say, does this person really want this? You know what I mean? What are they looking for? Yep. Anyway, um, by name of Nazareth. And uh, what happens? There was a, a man by name of Joseph. Anyway, you guys all know, you know where she's from, the house of David, right? Yeah, and she's a Parthenon. Miriam's her name, right? And he came into her, right? And he said, hi, what's up, right? He said, what's up? Look at the participle here. That's hot one. Goddess is beauty, right? Remember, wow. how old is she? How old is Mary when she gets pregnant by Jesus? I mean, by God. Or Isn't that what the tradition says? She's 12, bro. She's 12. Everybody realized that God, just Jehovah, just like that Zeus, just like Zeus, he's known for going after the young. Right. They like, they like the young. Yeah, okay. that's it. That's the way it is. Uh, I don't care what you say. That son of his, that legitimate son, is produced off of a 12-year-old girl. And we're going to look at some of that history. because She's involved with the temple, and she's involved with the purple, right? She starts hearing the voice of God when she's using the purple. And people don't even look at these texts because the early Christians said, oh, 
this is enough for us. We can't take it's too much, right? This is too much. Yeah. Right. But anyway, let's keep going with the text here. Yeah. So she's upset, right? She he's like, well, what happens? He says, Hokurios meta su. Yeah, God's on your side, baby. <laughs> baby. Yeah, right. What does it say? It says she's disturbed. Dia tarakte. That's from Dia Tarasso. And it means to shake out of fear. To no shake. Way. She's really disturbed, right? By his speech. He's like an angel who's harassing her. This is what that says. She's getting harassed. And wow. it says, Kai dia logizeto. She tries to work it out in her brain really quick to say, what could this possibly mean, right? Yeah. Potapos eeho aspasmos. That's an embrace. She wants to know, what is this greeting? What is this thing that he's telling me, right? Because he just shows up. Hey, hot babe, right? If, and if you want to check that, you know, go to Haris. Go to Haris and see where it comes from. You know who the graces are? The oh, you're talking about which one? This one? No, no, no. You don't know. I'm, I'm oh, okay. go, back, go back to the main text. I'm just okay. telling you. Hypothetically, you can go look this up and you can see. Haris is what the um, three women who are called the graces, what they possess. And they are always in the presence of Aphrodite. Always in the presence. So you work that out. You work that analog out in your head. And that's what this creepy angel does. Gabriel's a, a he's, he's, he's offensive, dude. He's like, you're hot. And so she's afraid. And he even tells her, he says, Mais faut boo. don't be afraid. Don't be afraid, right? You found the hot in parto theoi. You, you, you've got us in, in with God, right? And look, you're going to get pregnant with a kid and be, give birth. And you'll give it you the name you're going to give him. Call him Yesu. Yeah, call him Jesus, right? Now, before you even get to that name, right, look at what he's doing. He has to calm her down. Why? Is there some kind of weird thing going on? Give, give me the next verse. Watch what he did. Watch what the happens next one. next. Yeah, very next one. Yeah, and Miriam said to the angel, post Esther, how's this thing going to come about, right? Because I don't have physical relationship with a man. How am I going to get pregnant? I don't have a physical relationship with a man, right? I don't, I don't, I don't know any, any, you know, dude that I'm intimate with. And he answers, the angel answered and said to her, that Holy Spirit, that Holy Spirit's going to epileusitai you. He's going to epileusitai. You know what epercomai means in Greek? What? It means to come on suddenly, to seize. Oh, my attack. God. This Greek makes it so much different, doesn't it? Yeah, he's going to attack you. And watch this. This is the, the clincher here. And the power of the highest, the power of the highest, Upsistos. That, by the way, that's a title for Zeus, just in case you don't, you think Jove and Zeus aren't the same rapist. They are, right? He's yeah, the power of the I've highest. I've established that in my work, in my studies, too. <laughs> yeah, good. It's the, same, it's the same deity. Yeah, same rapist, right? Yeah. So, Episkiase soy. He's going to Episkiase soy. You know what that means? Schiazzo there is to make dark. To make dark, to fool or to lead or to put into darkness, which is exactly, that makes perfect ancient sense because it's exactly what Zeus does to all of the oracles that he ends up raping. And they're all that young Cora, that young Cora. We've got a scene from the Bacchae with Zeus sitting in the bushes watching her bathe before he goes in to have sex with her. Right, and what does he? Wait do? a minute, that word "ipsistu." That's the the that's that god. That's the high god. Yes, the highest. The well, I, don't why, the highest. I don't know why. I just that just I I just went, went right, right past that for some reason in my head. Yeah, yeah. that's 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 the Phrygian Sabatios. Yeah, that's 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 gangster D. That's yeah. dad. That's the that's dad. The, right. Yeah, <laughs> that's the dad. And he's bringing that it. girl into darkness. Right. I he's love it. I love it. That's him. <laughs> That's him. Sistos, guys. We we all know who this is. It's the same God. <laughs> yeah. So he he's the most high. Yeah. He he's sitting out in the bushes when she's taking a bath in the river. He's jerking off, and it talks about his essence and what what that ichor is used for. And then he goes in and has his way with her in the form of a dragon. It's fantastic. That's how it always happens, too. That's how the birth yeah. of the birth of Augustus. Same scene. Birth of Alexander the Great, and yeah. he's turned into a serpent. 
and it always comes yeah. down and and then the rape of Persephone, you know, it comes it's, out of the, that's Hades, but still, it, it wait, comes wait. Out of the ground. those three gods are are coming from the same that same uh, that's like what like what um the sibling and, text mentioned how yes the, the Saturn the Saturn the three gods of Saturn breath bra and the dragon remember the dragons associated with the breath God's gonna send that holy breath onto you babe don't yeah. worry don't worry she's twelve. She's 12, people. She's 12, which makes sense when you consider the next text that nobody else looks at, right? Oh, and we'll, uh, we'll look at that. We'll look at that in a minute. Yeah, okay. oh my. So right? I got this one? Yeah. And you got Eos, yeah. Um, let's go to, it's the third one. I think it's the third one you got. I don't know. If, keep going. Oh, this, yeah, was, this was just you defining it? Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, this is, yeah, keep going. Keep going. I got this. I got poison. this. We got poison. Yo, we're gonna look at the name of John and how to how to break down the name of John. But keep going. I want to get to the text of Mary. I want to get to the text. Wait, there's of another Mary. text that you yeah. sent. Yeah. Do we have a? Oh, okay. You know what? Which one is it? Why don't you see? I'll look. That's okay. You, you know what? I'll just go ahead and quote it here in the Greek. All right. I'll just go ahead and quote it. Um, there's something funny going on with Mary's baby. I mean, with the uh, with Mary as a baby, right? She's involved in the Gospel of James. She's which was declared, you know, no good. She is considered to be um, a servant of the temple, and she. What does she do for them? They choose according to necromantic lot. I mean, that that's one? that's literally what it says in, in the. Gospel I found the text James. from the Gospel of James that you're talking about. Yeah, let's see. Let's when, see right when you pull it up. All right, hold on one second. See if it's the cool to you in the front. Yeah, I found it. Let me just yeah. uh, upload it real quick so people can see and read along with us. There yeah. it is. It's real small, right? That's probably why I missed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, what does so um, after Mary is born, something spe uh, after Mary is born, something special happens um, with Anna, her mother. And this is what it's talking about. Um, Kai epoisin hagiasma. What is a hagiasma? It's a, it's a holy place, right? It says literally she makes her bed, right? By extension, her bedroom, the translators want to put this into bedroom, yeah. but literally in that space for the bed of hers, she makes a holy sanctuary. And she forbids pan koinon and akatharton. She she bids any common or unclean person, right, from coming in to dierhamai diautes to go through her. Wow! It's a really it's a really the translators uh, play with yeah things, they right? they they don't want it they're not going to translate it like that that's for sure no right right that's and so she, crazy. And she calls, Mary's mother calls these daughters of the Hebrews who are amiantus, who are unstained, unstained. And they do what? They diaplanon autain. They cause her to wander. Planes means to wander. And you think for a minute, you think, okay, um, the guys who translated this said, or at least one of the translations that I've read, um, put it as uh, they, they were her playmates, <laughs> right? They were playmates. But if, if you look up Diaplano, right, um, you'll find that it means to enter into that choric state, the state of the chorus. It's an actual process of dancing, wow. right? It's, it's a process of dancing. And so they are putting her into the place of the wanderer. And you say, well, what the heck? What is a wanderer then? Check it out in the book of Jude. In the book of Jude, I think I put this up there in one of those. Um, oh. We see that the, the wandering. Yeah, that's boosting us. No, not that one. I'm sorry. I, I'm going out of order. And I gave Wait, okay. So I'm, wrong. Is, is it after? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm way ahead of myself here. Okay, so it's got to be one of these ones then. This one? No, next one. No, that's just the poison, the EOS. Yeah, and the EOA. No, it's none of the. Oh, there I'm we sorry. Go. My bad. Okay, I got it. There now. we go. Jude one thirteen. right? Who are these people who are following the way of Cain in the mystery? They're the Asteres Planeta. 
What does that mean? They are they are those. It's translated as the wandering stars, but wow. the ones who the ones who enter into that choral worship. They teach her later to sing, right? In these these clean um, Hebrew uh, uh, women, right? They teach her how to sing, and she ends up. And notice here. Look, look, look. Uh, this is great. They're wandering stars for whom the Zophos to Scotus, that death mist of the darkness in the ions, right? That is what that is what is reserved for them. Anyway, because um, that's where they dance, brother. That's where they end up. And look, right? and this is that this is that word you were talking about through passion. Yeah. yeah. Pio de Orges. I mean, how you could translate that. Uh, on a scale of one to ten, one being the most protected um, Christian read of it, you would say something like, I play through passion, right? But if you um, read that in context, you might read it, um, I engage in the orgiastic rite that has to do with the pies, with the child, the play, the play thing. But this, right? is, this, is, this, is, this is where, this is the battleground tug of war right, right now that you're getting at because clement of alexandria writes about this in his exhortation to the greeks how there's the possessor the, the possessor in the ancient world was always the, the spirit of bacchus is the one that possesses you that's the possessor that those attributes get put onto the devil now i don't know if it's a i don't know if it's a one-to-one -one comparison bacchus is the devil or he's a piece of the devil that's what i think i think the idea of satan is paganism incarnate Everything about paganism we don't like, that's the devil. The possessor spirit is Bacchus. But you also have a polemic being done because you have possess, you can be possessed by the Holy Spirit too. So they're taking the idea of the possessor spirit and they're Christianizing it, making it their own, but also saying that they, that other spirit is the devil. So you have two spirits that can possess you. And, but that and they comes have to do that. They have to do that, Neil, because all the machinery, all the mystery machinery is built upon that from antiquity. They have to have right. that figure, right? So it's it's like, I don't know, they're just filling in the... It's the same framework, yeah, but they're just plugging in different modes in there. You know what I mean? It's yeah, with, with a rapist God, right? We're doing it. They're doing it through that rapist father. Yeah, that rapist Jehovah, right? He comes into her with that spirit, with that mighty spirit. He brings that in, that seed of fire. That's why those vessels, man, everybody asks, you know, what about the call to the vessels? Why are they so, they're so important that if you, if you bump into one, you won't. But if you bump into one, you can go to jail. If you, uh, uh, you can get pardoned, you know, on the other hand. Um, but uh, why is it they're always tending that fire? People are always like, okay, I understand the oracular nature of the vessels and the tradition through Rome, but I don't understand the fire and the keeping of that fire. That is that breath of fire through the dragon, right? The city is safe as long as it has the breath of the dragon. That's what that woman did. That's why the woman in Revelation is doing what she is doing. That is that big enemy of Christianity. That is why, because she's the original. She's the original source. And in the Gospel of James, Mary is presented as that Lady Babylon. She's in charge of the dyes. And when she's using the purple dye, when she's making the true, it even puts a James text, puts a spin on it by saying, it's not the adulterated purple that we're talking about. It's that pure purple that's exactly what i'm getting at there's these <laughs> these two sides that they're that they're that they're presenting because they're 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 drawing from these ideas and they're using these ideas for their own religion for christianity but they're also acknowledging that these ideas come from the places that they want to polemicize so that means that you have a pure purple dye and then you have an evil wicked purple dye but it has there has to be two of them because it can't be the same thing ours has got to be pure theirs can't be pure yeah, and it's a matter of just pharmaceutical. You can sell the stuff. They use the label for what is adulterated, what we would call on the medical side, adulterated, right? These people are serious. The temple secrets are kept in the temple. I mean, like you ask yourself, why is the temple in Jerusalem having to do anything with a purple dye 
that is used by pagans in a mystery cult operation. Why do they have anything to do it? Why is Mary, when she's 12 and about to get raped by God, why does she have the um, purple dye with her that when she starts to use it, she hears the voice of God and the voice of God talks to her, right? Uh, what's going on and why are they building the ayahuasca? This, this kid? Yeah, this, why are they building this kid? a sanctuary in her bedroom, right? Where these choruses come and teach her things. And it's the same thing why we don't understand when we see the Magi, we're like, huh? And we so stupidly, we make some freaking plastic dudes and go to plays at, you know, for Easter or Christmas. We watch the three Magi come around. and ha, 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 ha. Nobody knows the whole time. That you were talking about the cult operations of a mystery that use drugs and incorporate sexuality right into the middle of it you yeah. know when mary's when mary's uh coptic the uh coptic reporter comes forward there's a coptic source it's one of the coptic gospels that talks about the visit that mary's midwife had um to her yeah yeah oh. and and she has when she sticks her fingers, when she probes her, this is typical in antiquity. You're just checking the cervix, right? You're just feeling along the cervix and then up along the very top of the uterus, which you can't get all the way back, right? You just get around the side of the cervix. But anyway, um, when you're palpating, we used to palpate uh, in human repro. That was the thing that we did. Doctors have to learn how to do this, right? It's just a procedure. Anyway, her midwife did it. And it burned her hands. She pulled her hands out real quick. She has that solution, that purple on her fingers. It's the burning purple. And guess what? Mary is there as the priestess of the burning purple. This is so pagan. What the Jews are doing in the temple of Jerusalem is so pagan. I bet there was some kind of backlash against it at the time. Yeah. With the, with the people who were like, no, 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 this, this stuff can't go on like this this is this is this, to me what you're saying you're explaining to me why theodosius and the theodosius uh dynasty all of his you know successors after him that sort of do exactly what he's doing they're shutting down all the pagan places of worship shutting down all the academies all the museums and i think there's a reason why not just because they don't like pagans but i think it's because there's something they're trying to like distance themselves from this this where, where the, the where their traditions come from it's all and when, when i use it when i use the term paganism i'm well aware that this that term is is, is a derogatory term used by christians for polytheists that pa people didn't call themselves pagans but i'm only using it so it's for for the for the, for the case of so you know what i'm talking like i'm describing with the i'm using it from the christian lens even though i don't I get because a lot of academics will say, well, you shouldn't use that word pagan because it's and I actually do agree with that because they're not they don't call we're not like we're the pagans and you're the Christians. They're all one. It's all one thing. It's all one world. All the religions are intermixed. All the all the mythologies are overlapped. And then Christianity comes along at the post Theodosius because Constantine didn't do this stuff. Constantine was, was all about yeah, whatever. I'll convert to Christianity, but he didn't shut down the museums or anything. Theodosius comes along and says, it's only Christianity from here on out. And those are pagans. What does that word pagan even mean? Hillbilly. It's just a way of saying hillbilly. Isn't that interesting, though, how Christians went from being the, the not elites, the ones that dropped out of society, they all live in the desert as hermits, and they, they thought society was evil and you shouldn't join society, you should just drop out and start a church and live, uh, you know, but all of a sudden, when when Christian when Theodosius comes along, all of a sudden Christianity is, is the religion of the elites, and it's the hillbillies that are that are the wicked ones, the pagans. It's just everything flips on its head. Because you would you could probably argue that in the time of the first and second century, the the elites were were polytheist, and the hillbillies were the Christians. So it's just it's just it's ironic how yeah. that plays out that way. Judea is a backwater. People don't realize that. They're like, and you see the tourism today in Israel, right? And it's 
you don't realize that the archaeology here is of a backwater province, right? And you find giant cities and you're like, oh, this is a Roman colony, right? <laughs> this is a Roman city that was built at so-and-so time. And suddenly you realize the perspective and you're like, oh, these people were not giants at the time. No, in the first century, Judea was a backwater hellhole where people were fighting all the time, uh, religious factions fighting all the time. There's no central authority, right? And they've um, they've taken they now they have people who are anti-Hellenistic, you know, they're like we shouldn't be, we should be purifying our language. You know what I mean? It's like yeah, a lot well, this, of ethnic this, stuff. It's funny man. because that that even happens before that happens before Christianity even is around in the second century BCE during the Cato era. There was there was a big anti-Hellenism surge. It was a very conservative time period where people thought that Hellenism was infecting the populace. Bacchic worship got banned in one, I think 186 BCE. They put up they, they the Senate decreed no more Bacchic worship because it's 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 in, it's in, it's affecting all the plebs and making the plebs, you know, giving the plebs power. Because the Bacchic was like a, a was an egalitarian worship. Like you didn't, it didn't matter if you were poor or rich or man or woman. That was the Bacchanalia is for everybody. Whereas, so the, the, the Roman Senate in this one one eighty six BCE was like, we can't have this. So they put a decree. We have, we have uh, copies of this decree in, in the museum somewhere, but um, it didn't take long for, for Bacch Bacchanalia to come back because it's so, so popular. You can almost see that like, Christianity sort of borrows from the playbook of how the, the Bacchic worship thing happens because they were the ones that were the Bacchics were the first people to be discriminated against religious wise. And they, they have to be, they have to be by, by its nature, the Bacchic Oracle. When that remember, it stays Apollo, the Oracle stays Apollo for two years and it switches one to Bacchus so that there's an overthrow. So yeah. the things are turned over. It's very, uh, the Bacchic cult is hugely subversive. Because you take people now who, I mean, imagine you're a slave, Neil, right? You're working like most, you know, a lot of people in antiquity, not most, but a lot of people. And 90% of us are farmers. So you're a slave on a farm somewhere. You're doing farm work, right? But there comes a festival every so often that you can leave what Bacchanalia. you're doing. Your, your, your master can't tell you jack. And they would, they would be three, four weeks long sometimes. They'd be yeah. long Bacchanalias. Off in the in the and the oh and by the way there, a lot of them are women. It's all women, women doing right? It. They're in their own groups, which the Romans don't eventually have a problem with because the Magna Mater, the Great Mother and Bona Dea. Get this with Bona Dea. Imagine, I love the cult of Bona Dea in Rome. This is think about this as background for your religion. Think of twelve thousand women getting together at one event to which each of them brings a dildo. Yeah. Phallus. I just mentioned, I showed that in the text before. That they brought no, the phallus to the mysteries. No men involved. You cannot have a man there. And if you try to sneak in, it's a, it's a state crime that'll end up getting you in giant trouble. Yeah. Imagine that. A whole, a whole stadium of women who are entering into a riot that is sexual. I mean, it's fantastic. It's like, wow, that's uh, on a like a cosmically large level. It's no reason the people like Mark Anthony were trying to get in on that stuff. They wanted to go. They wanted to be involved, right? No, no, no. It's not. It's not the way, dude. Right? It's not the way we do things. But when we say that Mary ends up dancing, remember, it's the same tech vocabulary, technical vocabulary that's used for Salome. So there is some sort of special dance that these 12-year-old girls can do that is a religious process and that involves this burning purple and involves the rhema. When the, when the Bible mentions the rhema of God, people don't. They just hear the word of God. We just translate that as word of God. That's the word for oracles, baby. That's not right. logos. That's the, the word oracle. for oracle. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. And, and, so, and this brings us to like, the PGM, I love the PGM. It's a collection of these texts. And when you look at through this PGM, um, it's, it's, it's great that they're all put into one place because by reading through the PGM, Greek, by, by the way, for anyone wondering what I'm talking about, Greek magical papyri, um, it illustrates and highlights that the times that these people were living in, religions were not bordered 
There was no, you know, the Christians did this. And like, yeah, you might be a Christian and you might believe in this. You might have your gospel at your church or whatever. But like, it was understood that all this stuff was overlapping with each other. The PGM really highlights this. I'll show you an example. This is from PGM 7. And it's a charm. Take a lamp not painted with red, seven wicks. Make a wick of this is this sounds so orphic, by the way. This is what the orphics were doing. And it says, write on one with mirror, Yao, on the second Adonai, on the third Sabaoth, and on the fourth Pagore, on the fifth Marmoth, on the sixth Yao, on the seventh Michael. What? That's the angel, right? And then it says, put olive oil in the lamp and blah, 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 blah. And Adonai was cast out because of his violent anger. Sabaoth emitted these three cries. Pegore is by nature a hermaphrodite. Marmarth was castrated. Yaeo is entrusted with the ark. Michael is by nature a hermaphrodite. These are, this is magic being done by people living in the ancient world who Look at look on the bottom. From the diadem of Moses, take the plant snapdragon and hold it under your tongue while lying asleep. And rise early before you speak to anyone. Recite the names, and you will be invisible. <laughs> this tells you how to be invisible, guys. Go do it. Go try it out. Snapdragons. Has anybody heard anything about snapdragons? No that, idea what that is. Makes me wonder, man. <laughs> and look at and look at it says, but when you say them over your drinking cups. Give them to a woman. She will love you since this spell has power over everything. And then look, you see all the Yao, Sabaoth, Adonai. These are all these like, and this is, this is not like, this is not monotheistic at all, guys. And look at this. Look at this one. This one I love from PGM four. It says that you were sown by Kronos. You were conceived by Hera. You were maintained by Amon. You were given birth by Isis. You were nourished by Zeus, the god of rain. You were given growth by Helios uh, and dew. You are the dew of all the gods. You are the heart of Hermes. You are the seed of the primordial gods. You are the eye of Helios, the light of Selene. You are the zeal of Osiris. You are the beauty of the glory of Aranos, the soul of Osiris, Daemon, which revels in every place, the spirit of Amon. And you exalted Osiris. So exalt yourself, and just as Helios rises each day, your size is equal to the zenith of Helios. Your roots come from the depths, but your powers are in the heart of Hermes, your fibers and bones in Menevis, and your flowers of the eye of Horus. Your seed is pan seed. I am washing you in resin, and I also wash the gods, and I do this for my own health. Um, okay, now why did I pick this one? The reason why I picked this one is because the very next, the very next line. Okay. All right. So look at that line says two, 3007, right? The very next one, the very next one, it says the ex another exorcism with invocation, hail God of Abraham, hail God of Isaac, hail God of Jacob, Jesus Christos, the Holy Spirit, the son of the father who is above the seven who is within the seven. Bring Yao Sabaoth. May your power issue from him. You would drive away this unclean daemon Satan who is in him. This is right after what I just read. Now you know why Paul was telling all the Christians, the early Christians, he's like, you got to throw away your magic books. <laughs> yeah. You gotta you gotta yeah, throw were, this was all, it was all interconnected at first. They're using them. It didn't. It didn't get. I'm trying to really show people all this stuff did not get separated till later. I'll give you another example. Second century, very famous Christian called the Nascene preacher. He had a hymn to Addis. A lot of people who watch my channel already know this, but there might be some new people. He had a hymn to Addis. This is a synchronistic hymn. Blessed one born of Kronos, Zeus or Rhea, I loudly hail the Addis. The sirens call you Adonis. Egypt calls you Osiris. Blah, 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 blah. Anyways, he crossed off the word Addis and put Jesus on there. This is according to multiple sources, including, by the way, Justin Martyr, who I really want to show you something from Justin Martyr before we can go on. Justin Martyr says this. And when we say also that the Logos, who is the first birth, 
first word, logos is the Greek version. This is the English. I, I hate when they translate it as word. They should just keep it as logos because it means something particular. Who is the first birth of God, who was produced without sexual union, that he, Jesus Christ, our teacher, was crucified and died and rose again and ascended into heaven. We propound nothing different from what you believe regarding those sons, sons of Jupiter. For you know how many sons your, your esteemed writers ascribe to Jupiter. Mercury, the interpreting logos and teacher of all. Asclepius, who though he was a great physician, was struck by a thunderbolt and ascended into heaven. And Bacchus too, after he had been torn limb from limb. And Hercules, when he committed himself to the flames to escape his toils. And the sons of Leda and the Dioscori and Perseus, son of Danae. And Belarphron, who who sprung from the mortals, rose to heaven on the horse Pegasus. Which, by the way, you get that you see this imagery in the Quran, in uh, Islam. For when, for what will I say of Ariadne and those who like her have been declared to be set among the stars, and what of the emperors who die amongst? And look at, he even says it. He even gets he, he starts talking about Ganymede, and he's basically saying it's all. We're getting the same stuff from, he says, Mercury is the angelic word of God, right? Everyone, this was understood in the ancient world that Mercury was the messenger. He was the logos. So he's basically like uh, Justin, who's the, the, the first, the world's first great apologist is trying to, trying to level with these people saying, look, dude, we're no different than you guys. Leave me alone. He's, he's basically debating with Kelsis going back and forth. And, um, the last thing I want to show you real quick, and that this this is so this is this is new. I just found this. I was looking up images of Mercury, and I found a coin from the 80s BCE from the time of Sola. And there's a cross on it. And I'm just like, I wonder what's going on with that. I don't know. It could, it could be nothing. That could just be a, a universal symbol. But I'm just like, Mercury, who's the logos, who's the messenger. I just wanted to throw some conspiracy shit out there for you guys because you always love, I know everyone loves that. But anyways, all that stuff though, but what I'm highlighting is the world of religion was all interconnected. There was no borders. There was no, these are pagans. These are Christians. And like everybody was kind of operating in the same arena. Right? And that's what the, and, that, and that's what the Sibylline Oracle, the Sibylline books really illustrates the time, the timeline going on from, from beginning to end. Now, that's why it shouldn't surprise you that Mary is a virgin. Right? It shouldn't surprise you. She had to be according to the mystery. Like Persephone. Right? And they even say the rhema are all there, the things that we know that she has to be. Right? So, yeah, there's this, there's this deep, dark side that we're not seeing. And I think it's because we were, this effort that Neil is putting out there to stop you know, we got to burn the books. The Christians come forward. We got to burn the books. They literally burn the books, right? right? Right. And then they change their own history so that you and I can be controlled by that change, right? They get a, there's a monotheistic control that's put on. It's the same thing the Taliban does, right? There's a monotheistic control that you can have of people. And if you know that your people, like, you saw that Adam there is Addis. And then you realize, oh, crap, that stuff about taking Eve from his side and the initiation, and there's a serpent there with the fruit. By the way, that fruit, that fruit from the tree that grows in the garden, it bears 12 different types, 12 different types. And in the, which we all know, because Neil, you know this, there's 12 houses in the ion right it's in the jewish synagogues the ion the zodiac is there and there are 12 houses in it we know that that girl who will bear the god that she is that oracular girl that she is in her 12th year isn't that yeah. amazing isn't that amazing look and there's all you know what people some people have pointed this out in like some of the early iconography of like Sumerian culture, how they have like the, what some people think is might be connected to this tree, this, this tree. And if you count one, two, three, four, five, six, there's 12 on each side. And there's a one, there's another 13th on top. I wonder what that, I don't know. I'm just like, there, this could be a universal idea that's being, you know what I mean? This, this, this tree, this knowledge tree or whatever it is. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it makes you wonder if they were all using the same substances. Notice, Neil, that those those incantations that you picked out from PGM four, those are incantations over um, plants, specifically over the plants yeah. they're collecting for their ritual, and the approaching the god you're approaching them through that plant and so they're on something this purple is is uh, is a compound and they're on it and for some reason when you get it you can hear the rhema you can hear the oracles of the god you can hear the i gotta take a piss real quick just, I'll be right right. Go ahead. just keep talking though i'll just take on i'll just do a little song and dance for the people i wanted everybody to know the gangsta d is coming for you is coming for you gangster d is coming for you gangster dad with his son gangster g gangster jesus is coming and he's going to come through that wedding there's going to be a great judgment right there's going to be a great judgment and those of us who were not with gangster d's mark right those of us who don't have that we're going to end up on the losing end Right. We're going to end up with that fire from heaven. It comes down and consumes us. You know, this is all part of the mystery. Right. It's part of the mystery operation. So when we talk about the drugs that they're using and these rites and whatnot in order to induce the visions, this is all that quantum science. This is this is the holistic. This is the whole approach. Right. This is the drugs. This is the molecules. This is the body. This is the song and the religion and getting us to that point of the orgasmon. Yeah, that place where we achieve that understanding. When Mary comes there, when she comes to that point, because the angel comes in, he's like, you hot, right? And she comes to that point. That is an oracular tradition that is fulfilled time and time again. That's all these ancient stories are about. That's all these ancient stories are about is this abduction, this rape, this rape. If they all look, have that in common. Yes. All God the is rapist. stories, any, think of any sacred myth of any certain pagan cult or whatever. It's always centered behind some sort of rape that happens. And Herodotus tells us those rapes were for oracular reasons. People wanted those oracles. So they went and collected them. And if you're a woman who happens to have been entered into that um, oracular track, and this is, Neil, I want to ask you and your audience this, because this is controversial, but it's cool. Okay, today we're talking about transformations between gender, and we're seeing like people on hormones, you know, surgery, what can you do? What if there's drugs that we can use that will turn somebody into something else, a higher form, a higher form that they would call divine, that could live for an extended period of time, could live for an extended period of time, could function on a level, would look like something different, comes out physically different. You know, back to that Medusa image. Why are these cults always trying to bring up the Medusa? Why do they always have their all, even Athena, the worship of the Virgin is symbolized by the Medusa. The Medusa herself is a priestess of Athena who gets raped by the Enosigion, that shaker of the earth. Again, Zeus of the waters, Poseidon is just Zeus of the water, right? He's the one who rapes her. He's the one who, who enters that that shrine and, and rapes her, right? What, how, what do we do, Neil? If we have this technology that we can we could create, we could bring out um, this person, right? Could we create a Medusa today? Could we, with our technology, could we bring that oracle forward physically? I think so, so. We, we have her. Would we want to do that if we could? I think so. What do you, I mean, I think you think the Christians would say, because, okay, this was actually bringing me to the next point is that they would think this is some sort of wicked devil. There might, they might find it for some reason and find 666 in there somewhere. And, and they're like, they're going to reinterpret their text and apply it to the modern times and say, look, they're creating Medea, Medusa, serpents, devil, evil, bad, right? 
What if that's what we have to do to bring back Lady Babylon, though? I mean, what if she is that Medusa that produces that cup? And we can actually do it just from a scientific base. You know, forget the evangelicals who would it would upset and they would inv inevitably say this is satanic, to which I would say, thank you very much. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah. It what is. Would, what would the so what would this what would this Medusa do? She would have that oracular connection that we don't have. She would be able to see. Oh, it's like AI predicting things and be able to see. Dude, I'm with it. Let's bring it and and map it out for us, right? So that we. Dude, can, what, if that's what, what if that's what eventually does happen with AI? Yeah, becomes yeah. like an oracle, becomes oh. like a super powerful oracle. That's and like we test it out, and it actually is like spot on, one hundred percent right about everything. Yeah. 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 Oh, and by the way, we, we're, you and I are talking about the Antikythera mechanism. People don't know what that is. Uh, should I just pull it up real quick? Sure, oh. sure. I I just read something recent on it. it said they're still working on trying to figure out how to get a, how to create how to create um, a working model of it because they said according to the gears and tubes, and I don't understand it, but according to the gears it's and tubes, wild. it calculates the exact orbit of um venus and saturn yeah and so i mean think about that people i mean people. if we hadn't stopped this is like second third century right if if we hadn't stopped if christianity had not plunged the west into darkness yeah. think of where we would be now this is a computer an ancient computer an meant analog, to oldest analog computer ever found from the third century bce what happened, Neil, between the third century and this century? And the, and the reason why I brought this into the to the discussion now is you mentioned the AI oracle that we can create with our technology. But check this out. They said that they use this, whereas I'm trying to find where it says uses of it. It's, it's in here somewhere, I'm sure. Operation. On the front of the mechanism, there is a fixed ring dial representing the ecliptic. The 12 zodiacal signs marked off equal 30 to degree sectors with that match with the Babylonian custom of assigning one twelfth of the ecliptic to each zodiac sign equally. By the way, this is all Greek too. This is found in Greece. Mm -hmm. Even though even even though the constellation boundaries were variable. So right there we know that the ancient world was connected in so many ways with all this different religious stuff and all these different ideas. Math and all this stuff. Look at and it says outside the dial is an is another ring which marks the, the months of the Egyptian calendar. So you have a Babylonian and Egyptian. They have the lunar Babylonian and the solar Egyptian, right? Months are marked with Egyptian names in the Greek into the Greek alphabet. The first task is to rotate the Egyptian calendar to match the current zodiac points. The, the Egyptian calendar uh, is advanced through a full 120 years. Anyways, the long story short, this was supposed to predict lunar, solar, planetary events in the sky in and so prophets and sibyls would hold, would have these devices and they would use them to predict things. And you could even say prophets and sibyls were those devices. Because yeah, that's what, exactly. You just figured it out. They are functioning within the ion. That division into the 12 and everything, they're like, oh, this is Babylonian, right? That is the ion, baby. That's how the math works out. So, yeah, love. This is, this is the fruits of paganism, dude. Yeah. It's the fruits of polytheism. Isn't that not ironic how they talk about how if you're if your prophet or if your religion isn't giving fruits, that's no good. Yeah. Like, look at these fruits, man. Everyone technology is coming up. They you know they have the Orphix, the Orphix invented a um a organ, a musical instrument. It was a water, it was powered by water. Want to see this real quick? Water? Did I show you this? Yeah, you showed you showed me that last time. I hadn't yeah. heard of that one either. Um, but it's nice. It's nice. Water what do water. you do? What do you do though, Neil? In a culture, as you're finding that, what do you do in a culture um, that you can take this device to them and they can want to smash it and destroy it? Right? They can. What? When do we get those cultures that want to take people like this and put them away? And why is that? Is that a monotheistic thing? Look at what a beautiful. Oh no, you, is. you, we. It's in, it's in Genesis one, the tree of knowledge. Yeah, it's right. evil. Knowledge right. is evil. Right. Fear of the Lord, fear of God, good. Knowledge, bad.
Yeah. That must be why that's they're why, always that's, burning. That's the, that's the entire re- Look at Cicero on his Republic uh, first century mentions two machines that some modern authors consider to be a kind of. So basically Cicero's writing about it. Yeah. Uh, also, there's a text by, let's see, where is it? It's up here somewhere. It's by Archimedes, the famous scientist, Archimedes, who almost defeated the Romans. That makes sense. He was, he was writing about it too. It's in here somewhere. Yeah, I'll he was a later. smarty. There's no wonder. Yeah. No wonder he was involved in this thing because he was a exactly, smarty. exactly. Yeah, and I bet that thing is from somewhere where the Syracusan scientists were working on it. I bet that's what that was. Yeah, that the Antikythera. That's beautiful. I love this man. I love, I love it. it. I love what it. happened, Neil? What happened that we we didn't continue progressing? We should have gotten computers long before this. Is That's what I'm something? saying. They already had. They already knew this was already on the the list of things to do for the yeah. for the ancient Greeks. Like they, this, if they would have if they if this would have got popularized, let's say they started producing these things all over the place, then people would eventually build off of that. That's how technology works. Like the camera was first a box that would like put light onto a figure and it would print out a little like it would give an image. Like it was just kind of it was very uh very simple at first but eventually people built off this idea and now we have video cameras where we can talk over the internet so if we imagine that these i this computer was circulating and everyone knew about these things and they kept building off of this and eventually i think honestly probably i would say before the 10th century you, you might have some sort of like i think 10th 11th century you, you might have electricity by then Right? Isn't it amazing? It it makes you wonder too what who's who who destroyed this thing? Who stopped producing these, right? What was the what was the motive? Was it pagan? Because, was it because it had to do with the pagan worship of the houses, the twelve? That's, houses that's what I'm guessing. Day because day? it's because it's it's got pagan all over it. <laughs> it's got Egyptian and Babylonian months on it. That's evil. That's wicked. Get out of there. That's 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 knowledge, guys. That's the tree of knowledge. It's bad. Why does that stuff, why does the tree of knowledge scare evangelicals? Do we have any evangelicals who would be gracious enough to give us an, an answer in the chat somewhere? I mean, you know, a free answer? Can, can anybody well, just guess, Neil? If I, had a guess, you- if I had a guess, I would say because knowledge, knowledge brings people into, um, brings you, it, 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 it's, uh, the, the knowledge brings you to destruction. Like the knowledge is like, I don't know. It takes you, it makes you a materialist where you should be spiritual. The knowledge is material because it brings you devices and it brings you vices, devices. Get it? If you like today, if you knew, if you knew that your history, your country had a history of racism, right? The easiest way to deal with that is just to, burn those books right and just not talk about the racism at all right what is this thing about what is this inherent inflexibility that christianity has uh, the all that monotheistic religions have what is this inherent weakness this this unbendability this inflexibility that they have that when they encounter something they have to squash it if they can't control it what is it why is paul the apostle himself getting into this debate of faith versus reason because because the pagans you know were like uh you can take your faith and shove it because i worship reason right and we don't need to believe anything paul right? that, and, and this is this is a perfect point knowledge leads you to question your faith Not, knowledge gives you the the tools to to become to challenge the the one that you're supposed to submit to that can't be allowed and think about it. So they instead of so the the way they the way they sort of battle this is by saying, beginning of wisdom is fear of the Lord. And that's how you sort of uh insert like for anyone who's like trying to be smart and wise and have knowledge, you tell them this. And it just sort of cuts you off from any so it's like fear of the Lord has to come first, and then you'll have your then you'll be nice and wise, but it's it's kind of a uh it's a misdirection. If you think about it, it's like there's a clause in there. You can have this fear thing, yeah, right, and that fear thing can lead you to it. It's gangster dad, man. That's that's gangster daddy, 
right? In the, tri in the Trinity, that's gangster daddy. The Christians really grabbed onto that. And they were like, yeah, we got a fear. We got yeah. a fear, you know? You ever there's, see? There's other, there's other passages in Proverbs that it's like human knowledge is wicked and evil and it will bring you to your destruction. But fear of the God, that's good yeah. knowledge. That's good wisdom. That's like, yeah. Isn't, it's, it's kind isn't, of, that what, isn't that what Satan was getting at when he went to do the whole Job episode? He was like, why do you, you think, know. Why do you think in Enoch? What do you think? What are those fallen angels in Enoch doing? Yeah. They're not coming here. And, oh, okay, yeah, it does say they rape some women. That's pretty bad. Okay, <laughs> but it also says <laughs> I'm not going to ignore that. But it also says that they're giving everyone knowledge of how to create the knowledge of fire, knowledge of this, knowledge of that. They're giving them knowledge. That's bad. That's evil. Fallen angels give knowledge. Yeah, is that why sorcery is so bad on the Christian side? Because it's some kind of mystic hidden knowledge or something that they don't yeah. want you to have, and yet they all. Uh, notice that the monotheist religions they they have this fear of that magic yet at the same time they want to control it so you got those special groups through time through history who will take all the knowledge from them for themselves the kabbalists did this right you have to know if you don't know these number codes you really can't work the magic right oh okay whatever thank you very much a thousand years too late right um, but this christians do the same thing they've got esoteric groups meant to hold back that no i mean the, think of the vatican people don't realize it but um there's no conspiracy whatsoever i think conspiracy is full of bs um i think it's a way to control people but the vatican is sitting on some of the largest collection of antiquities why don't they release these things publicly right why don't they why don't, why don't they let the scholars, let some scholars come in there and translate it and bring it to the bring it to the internet so people can yeah. go look it up you got to have special permission. Dr. McEwen, yeah. it took him a year. It took him a year to see one manuscript of Ovid that he only had an hour with. No right? way. What did it's it like, say? Yeah. Why, why are you doing what well, was on I mean, it? He was, it was just one of his, I don't know what even text it was, but he was, he was the, he was the um, American expert in Ovid. He was the number one guy. Oh, so he was, man. Ovid he was, he if you can pick one on. person to, to, to like d spend spend your whole life exploring, Ovid's a good one right there. Yeah. He was probably blame. looking at textual variants and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. But um, I I also know the uh, a guy from the American school um, who went to um, the Vatican itself when the archives were opened up. And he contacted me after my book came out, and he said, you wouldn't believe what they have in the archives. I said, what do you mean? I wouldn't believe he said they've got sexual stuff that describes exactly what you're talking about with all of the uh, sexual medicine stuff. That's what I'm they have applicators. They have all sorts I'm of not surprised at all to keep erections up. They have this thing that you're supposed to but get this. You're going to love this. Yeah. A tube. That's that what this stuff is. A metal tube. <laughs> That's what this stuff is. It's basically like at home recipes and how to fix your you know how to do stuff like yeah. it's all, and it's all it's all it's all religious and it's all connected man it really it's yeah. crazy imagine if you had a tube this that you could ram down your um urethra and you can blow into a, a chemical that will give you an erection for a sustained period of time like a viagra right but, <laughs> but it's used within a right so they have clamps that they put on the bottom of your penis in order to keep it engorged, right? During this whole the time that they're applying. And he said the sculptures are, are dirty. The stuff they have is like super dirty. You've seen the one where Pan is having sex with a goat. Yeah. He said I've there's there's one. there's stuff like that that smacks of ritual. He, he said it's like he said it was the exact same things you're writing about. And they have the the artifacts to show that why doesn't the vatican open up you know wh why does this stuff have to remain secret right i don't understand that it's not a conspiracy it's just i don't know laziness what the what's going on right there's a graphic one right that's the this is an ancient sculpture people so don't get upset way, Pan is the image of the devil now and there's a reason why he's the all his yeah. name means all in greek yeah. nice. and uh but bacchus was depicted as a as a as a pan in yeah. some in some senses
Now he's got a whole army of pans, right? Yeah. What's the- <laughs> that's, a, that's why the devil is the one who possesses you. It's Bacchus. They respond. His army of pans treats him as if he were pan or speaking with the voice of pan. So, yeah, yeah. no, love it. When I, when, I went to, when I went to see Pan's Grotto in Israel, there's a sign in Hebrew that says it's it literally says this is Satan's. This is the it's, it has sh- sh- Shatan in there. Satan. It has that name on there. Like, I'm like, so they're, they're not even like, they're like, yeah, that's Satan. They're not even calling it Pan. They're calling it, the locals are calling it Satan. And they're saying this is the path to the underworld to go to Sheol. So it's all, it's the same shit. Like, it's, it's, it's just, I love it though. Like, cause they're, they're acknowledging that paganism is, that's, that's, that's the devil. That's, that's, you know, that's you idolatry. Can't, you can't argue with the monuments. You can't argue with the lo- localities and the, the inscriptions. You can't argue with that. That's why I constantly say that, Neil, and I bore, bore the audience with this, and I'm sorry, but it's all about sources. It's all about evidence. It doesn't yeah. matter. When, when somebody comes on and they have a, a I'm a religious Period. historian, or I have this vaunted idea, you know, just give me the sources. There's so much sources. like the, like, why is Pan having sex with that goat? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any Neil? Any idea why Pan is having sex with a goat? I think it. I think it has to do with um that that energy that that uh that spirit of that orgiastic spirit. Like it's going as hard. It's hard. It's hardcore as possible, and that's the image of it. Yeah. Like that's the most extreme thing you can think of. Look at what it does to him, right? I mean, he's part goat, right? She's hot. Right. That goat is hot. That goat has found hottest with Pan. That's the expression they use, right? The charites follow the sex goddess around. When you find grace with someone, it means because they want to bone you. Yeah. Right? And that's why that's- they, that, for, that, there's a title that um, Sola, his, before, his nickname was Epaphroditus, mm-hmm. beloved of Aphrodite. Yeah, nice. and that's a, that's a title. Not doesn't mean that it means lucky, but the the etymology of the word me literally means beloved of Aphrodite. But if if you're a lucky person, that means Aphrodite loves you. You're you're muted. You muted. Muted. You're no, muted. I see what you're saying. Yeah, because yeah. it is literally that the etymology of it. But the etymology yeah, no. literally means you, Aphrodite loves you. But they but, use the word for lucky for like you, Daimon. It's because you are under the under the power of a good God, right? You have that hottest. You are eudaimon. You are fortunate. They call they call eudaimon fortunate too. It's the same thing. Under the influence of that star, under the influence of that urania. So why do people find it so odd? Like, okay, Neil, look, we according if what you and I are talking about was reality, and these texts are telling us what the reality was then they were involved in cults that were using drugs and sex in kind of advanced aphrodisiac biological that word ways. Again. Aphrodisiac yeah. is a drug that gets you in the mood. Yes. And it's literally using afro. It's got that afro d in there. Yeah. Yeah. Afro, Aphrodite. Right. Yeah. And the, you call the, when you get that constant erection that sustained, we call it a sustained erection. They um, from an aphrodisiac. Um, one of those aphrodisiacs that does that is called Saturion or the Satyr's drug. Wow. Right? You can take the Satyr's drug. We have it. It exists. You can find it in um, uh, the Satyricon, the play about the Satyr's. You know, it, it's about a dude. It's about a dude who goes because he's having erection, uh, erectile dysfunction. And he ends up having his erection restored. Yeah. And he, the they, have, they do it with drugs. She puts a drug on a dildo and slides it in his anus while he's tied down. And the only reason he's tied down is because she gave him something to drink first and it knocked him out. <laughs> wow. And then he, yeah, no. and he woke up with it with, and he, he was feeling it. He, was, <laughs> he, wake, he wakes up with his wrists and his ankles. He, he wakes up with his life. wrists and his ankles tied to the bed. And then this young priestess comes in who's too young, man. She's underage, right? And you're sitting there naked on the bed, and she starts whipping him on a penis with stinging nettles. I don't know if anybody's – has anybody been into stinging nettles, but they don't feel all that good. So then she slides a dildo into his rectum, 
um, covered with a drug. And you're like, what? Well, that, you know, and so anybody who's, you know, had their fair share of partying will know that <laughs> one, of the, one of the most common ways to take ecstasy is to slide it up in there because of all the pores. And any human rectum has like the most, it's the closest thing to your bloodstream, right? If you put something in there, it goes right into your bloodstream that way. It's like the it's like the most effective way to take a drug is to put it up there. So what you're saying isn't isn't all that surprising. I think they used to call it butt chugging. Jamie you... Lynn says, "Where is this convo gone?" <laughs> <laughs> it's true though. No, but that's that's what they would do. They would yeah. the ecstasy. They 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 called it something. I used to. I should know this. They call it something. They call it boofing or boofing. Yeah, boof. Yeah, they, they call it boofing yeah <laughs> they're one step away they're one step away imagine if instead of the substance that they're putting on the dildo um imagine if they used the substance from their mouth first and transferred it to the dildo the, or the medical applicator whatever you want to call it the device yeah, the device the then, gave, then gave it to the woman to use vaginally because like the rectum you can absorb vaginally very quickly, right? P p nobody's people have tried butt chugging, right? But nobody has, uh, that I know have, or have ever heard of. I'm sure somebody's tried it. Um, but well, the other side, like they did in antiquity, um, chugging from the colpos or from the vagina, from that area that builds the drug. Is so this what they look like? You could go. Oh, this. Yeah. Well, that's something. What, it's probably something they would use, right? What is that from? I don't know. I don't recognize it. Oh, my God. Look at this one. This one looks like it's super yeah. technical device. Like this. Wait till you see the one I just pulled out. Like I'm just looking up phallus, nice. ancient phallus on, on Google. This is what's coming up. Ancient dildo. You know, they um, look at that. While Neil is with all is, the holes on it. What's the what do you think the yeah. holes are for? How many penises do we have there? I count there's, three. There's, there's three. But and first of all, it has wings. That's interesting. Yeah. But what's yeah. with the three hole, four holes? Actually, I bet they're mounting holes. I bet it goes. They're, they're probably mounting it on something, yeah. so you can like keep it stationary. Put it on your door, right? Put it on your door, and people see that, and they're like, "Oh, this guy wards off danger." Right? right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just like their gardens, they put a big statue of a dude with an erection in their garden, and then you could take the erection and use it as a club right. against the yeah. Right. What's the yeah, gorgeous? Love Everyone this stuff. knew. Here's it, one right here, actually. Everyone knew ancient, that the priapus was a charm. It's in the it's in it's in here too. It's in the PGM that if you took a priapus and put it in front of your house, it would it would ward off bad spirits. And it all oh, they look like this. This is what it looks like, and you'd have them like little garden gnomes in front of your house, all over ancient Greece. This was common. And we have texts written by Christians who talk about the obscene rites where the girl will mount the priapus. And it's, it's her fluid that we're looking for. She doesn't even have to have the thing penetrate her. She can just sit on that priapus and go backwards and forwards and produce a communion from that. So you got to think, these people are really... They're into this overlap of religion and medicine and sex. They're doing this thing. And it's all related to songs. They're producing songs out of this art. Neil was just showing dildos. from. Uh, um, you can read an entire work on dildos by a guy um, who was censored originally, but 19th century stuff. He will tell you that um, the dildos are very common and important in antiquity, and they've got wooden ones that you gild with a metal of some sort and they have leather ones that are you know all over the place on the stage and stuff i use those on the stage because you can you can make them erect or they can go soft or you can make them erect um and they also have very nice polished stone dildo polished stone so you think about that expensive alabastron and you think about mary magdalene rubbing the outside of that thing and applying it just like we see in Aristophanes. And you get a picture then of, oh, there's a lot of sex going on in these rites. There's by a the way, that Aristophanes play was one of the most famous. Hmm. Everyone, everyone knew it was a household story yeah. that everyone knew. Yeah. And it's involving sexual shit. Like it was like that was normal back then. Yeah. Like, well, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, after 
after a few hundred years of Christianity, it's like that's all bad, evil, wicked, horrible. What's witches stuff? Witchcraft, yeah. witchcraft. Yeah. But this was all normal and it, for a long time. All this stuff was completely normal. That's why God is having sex with 12 year old girls. I mean, think about it. Think about it for a minute. Your religion, if you are Jewish or Christian or monotheistic Muslim, your God, your father God at some time was raping virgins. Was raping virgins. That's the world that's Think in about that. When they say, when they say the playing with them, when those those wandering planets, right? Those wandering stars. Yeah, they're they're talking about virgins. They're talking about girls who are just about to enter into the stage where they can get married. What's this one say? You sent me this one. We never touched it yet. Yeah. Oh, this is what Mary, this is from uh, Gospel of James. And it says what they pulled lots for Mary to do. And that was for her to nese ton crucion, to weave. You were talking, this is perfect, Neil, perfect setup. To weave, like the fates, to weave the crucion and the amianton and the businon Right. These are all different types of um, threads, different types of threads. The golden thread, the pure thread. The Businan is the one that we've seen with the boy in the in the uh, garden with Jesus, yeah. you know, naked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That is Businan is the linen dyed. No way. Yeah. 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 And There's something going on with this. With this, yeah. Movie. And notice that two of the dyes that she's supposed to work with on the second line, the coquinon and the porfuron, that the beast, right, that brings up. That's almost ladies. that's like the same as Porphyry's name right there. Yeah, it is. It what is it the same root. It purple. <laughs> so Porphyry, Porphyry yeah. means I'm um, the purple guy. The purple, yeah. Right. Wow, interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Porphyria is that manufacturer of that purple. It's so if you can get the pure stuff. Porphyry is one of the ones who translated that that text about L and Saturn too. He's one of the yeah. people who did that. Porphyry is, yeah, he was good anyway. Um, the the uh, the cave, right? Remember the cave. Porphyry's cave, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> it's one of the most famous. It's been one of the most important texts. Like yeah. people talk about. Why? Because he was in the cult, brah. He was in the cult and he understood what the images were. And so when, when Jesus is hiding stuff from people, when gangsta G is hiding stuff, he's doing it from within the cult, right? It's a why is it a, a cave of nymphs though? What's that mean? Yeah. Well, um with Athena sitting at the front, the place where the gods meet, right? And he talks about Mithras. Yeah, because you have to enter into that nymphic darkness you have to enter into that That's, i think it's the same thing with the cora when we go to eleusis and we fasted and we prepared and we're going to drink whatever it is that gives us the vision of the rising queen of the underworld when we're in that zone remember you that, go to a cave first that's what it says cora is 12 you walk, you walk from the cave at eleusis to athens yeah and it right. says that there was a tradition that if you're if you if you're one of the people initiated, you're you're taking that divine walk. It's called the Sacra Via in Latin. There's a Greek, I forgot what the Greek is, but they call it. They literally named Sacra Via in Rome. They named it after uh, the the road of Eleusis. Anyways, the sacred way. You're walking the sacred way. You were supposed to yell obscenities and profanities at any any walker buys. It's part of the right for whatever reason, because you're supposed to get in that Bacchic revelry state where you're you're pumped up and you're feeling it and you got the kaiki on it and you see somebody walking by, hey, what the fuck you? Yeah. Like that was part of the right was to get you all amped up. It's like it's like streakers partying. It's like people in college. It's the same thing. Like it's that it's like something something about that something powerful about that something about that mental state. The Romans did the same thing with. They always had people who followed the. Um, at the triumphs who followed the Caesars around saying, you suck and your mother is, is blah, 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 you know? And um, one of the things they would shout, uh, they would shout down Caesar this way. It's the same thing to keep that nemesis off, to keep that, to keep that force away. It's a bonkick. It's a religious thing. And you're like, I don't get it. Well, you don't get them having sex in temples either. And those virgins, by the way, those girls that are producing those bodily fluids that we're using in the cult, 
We drink their babies. Here, this is one for the evangelicals. Evangelicals, imagine this. Imagine this. We are drinking the aborted, the chemically aborted fetus of babies in order to have ionic life. That's what your religion is doing. Now all the uh, QAnons are going to say, see, we knew it. This was, this is the, the, there's like something they talk about where they, they talk about eating babies or something. They're say, see, we knew it. We knew it all along. The scholar told us. Yeah. <laughs> they are eating babies, right? But there's something about that fetal tissue mixed I, with those drugs that she is. Well, the, what, what do you think? What do you think they're doing? Um, there's a cancer reversing drugs that is and the only way is the reason why it's so controversial is the only way to make it is by using aborted fetuses yeah everybody knows the power of the fetus right they even talk about this the, 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 the suit or south park made a whole episode joking about it how Did they? the guy the guy who the guy the guy who played superman remember he was uh paraplegic oh yeah, yeah, he, yeah, was yeah. One of the, he was one of the first people that was that was uh messing around with this new drug i can't remember the name of it but it had something to do with stem cells or stem something? cell research yeah, yeah 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 stem cell research it, it makes you wonder if there's something in that mix some kind of pluripotential biochemistry of some yeah, sort okay. that, some some crazy science shit going on when you're taking it if, isn't it worth it though if you could if no, you, could, do you know do you know the only people that were lobbying against it was christians yeah oh <laughs> they hate knowledge obviously stem cell research that's evil right <laughs> Save, save the children. They'll hold up a save the children line, sign when they come from a Christ who was arrested with a naked boy whose penis he was deriving an antidote from for the crazy snake venom that was in the alabastrum that he would have been sticking up his rectum. This is, I mean, we got to we got to get these rights back. We got to see what these people are doing. We got to see Jesus 100%. You know, Neil, this is an issue I want to bring up. I don't want to hold your audience cuz you've Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll be we'll get done after this. What do you what do you think is the um, you know, and the last thing that we did together, um, the topic came up of what do you do? Can you really give Christians this knowledge? Um, and my you, my answer is, yeah, yeah, you have to, because they have to know the reality. You can't let them sit in ignorance, right? W what do you think? Um, do, you feel a, do you feel like a push for your audience to, I don't know, to be able to say, hey, audience, I got the truth for you. You know, I got, I got the reality. Or I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. I'm just, uh, I'm just trying to let people know, like, where all these ideas come from. And there's no special box for for judeo-christianity or islam these ideas even especially islam where it really tries to distance itself from all other the, the, these ideas are coming from co common sources common paths of knowledge you know what i mean that's all i'm trying to say i'm trying to show people that and bring in bring if look if we're gonna have a world of people believe in all this stuff why not have other options bring back bring back the temple of the muses yeah that's what i say yeah bring, bring back it. that oracle man yeah why not yeah i don't know if it's i don't know if then we, can, then we can really see who's who's got the truth is it if it like you know the christians and all their failed prophecies of trump winning the election what if what if we see with the pagans what if they're getting stuff right we'll never know let's see who has why don't we don't know we, they're good they're not around uh with you know obviously the obviously pagans are around i'm not saying they're not around but they don't have the power that you see what the churches do. Yeah. They're not, you don't have pagan politicians. So like there is a big difference between people say, people always say, well, what do you mean? Pagans are around. Yeah. But they're not really like, they're not holding power. They're not, they don't have weight. There's no like power behind them. They're just spread out in little pockets here and there. Whereas there's no the church there's no has power in politics. There's no oracle. You know, you can talk about the witches, the Wiccans. You can talk about um, kind of the goddess movement and the pagan, modern pagan movement, modern Satanists. You can even talk about. And yeah. they all they all lack the same thing. They lack that original authority that allowed them to produce things like the oracle. 
Nobody can use those mysteries. That was a anymore. state run thing. Yes. Nobody exactly. uses those mysteries. Right. Yeah. Wiccans. No, I've talked to Wiccans. I've worked with Wiccans. And I can tell you for a fact, they have this weird fascination with things that are Christian. It's like they fell into this Christian stream. Thank you. The, I agree with you. 100%. Paganism along the way. I don't know yeah. why. I don't That's know what why. they're doing now. Yeah. 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 Funny how that yeah. is. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, before we go. I just wanted to say real quick, because these these oracles, the last thing I didn't touch on real quick, and this is what this won't be long, is that if you follow these sibling texts, they go in order from timeline to timeline, and then eventually they just become Christianized. And so, for example, they talk about how the devil must be bound for a thousand years, and the martyrs and those those Mohammedan Mohammedans, and they lived and reigned with Christ and blah blah blah. And basically, what they're getting at is they're repurposing all these texts in the 10th century, 11th century, 12th century, and saying that Muhammad is the actual Antichrist. See how this, look at this. The Greek will make 664 if you write Muhammad in there. So all these, so these ideas get changed and repurposed. And now even in 2023, even if they're doing it, even if it's not Sybilists that are doing it, maybe it's QAnoners that are doing it, but they're still applying the same methodology to modern day. The, oh, the, the vaccine, that's the mark of the beast. Like, it's the same exact thing. They're just redoing it in a different time period for different people. That was the last thing I wanted to talk about. But yeah. Thank you for oh, having Tower, me. Tower of Babel's in there too. That's, one, <coughs> yeah. that's in book 11. No, that's central. You can't have, without yeah. building that tower, you can't have any of the apocalypse. Love that. Marcus Love Aurelius, that. Commodus. They just keep going. They keep going throughout the centuries. It just... They literally have a steady flow of Sibylline texts from ancient Rome all the way up until 1600s. They, keep, they just keep going. I'm telling stop. you, I'm telling you, Neil, from the time they had the Sibylline books from Egeria, from that time, the Romans supposedly knew what their whole future was, right? That's what they said. Everything was laid out. How can you make an AI or a program? How can you create a person? that you've bathed in the womb with certain drugs. And when they get to a certain age, because they're under the influence of these different drugs, they turn into this Medusa that can then access the future. Think about it for a minute, just scientifically quantum wise, you can access the future. Imagine if we could do that. What an incredible tool for humanity. That would be, imagine if that's the next step from the computer is deriving that very tool that can tell you this is going to happen tomorrow, right? And the day after that and the day after that. And this is how the American state will flourish or die. I mean, it's people don't get it. You're creating a way to see into the future and bring that back. Otherwise, your magic is BS, right? Your religions are BS. Your, your working is BS. Don't call yourself a Satanist unless you can make that oracle. Unless you can perform that mystery as it originally was performed, don't don't claim that power. You know what I mean? That's I don't know. I don't know. Thanks for having me tonight, Neil. I'm sorry to talk no, you're so fine. long, but it's so captivating sense. being with you. Yeah, I love this. I I hope we can do this if not every Sunday, every other, or, you know, whatever. I yeah. hope we can do this on a regular basis, you know? Yeah. If people want to see it, if people want to see it, they may just want to see you, bro. You no, know, you're, I mean? You, they may just want to see you. They're all, they're all, they're all starting to migrate over to your channel. I see you keep getting more and more subs every day, <laughs> good. which is good. Oh, by the way, which brings me to uh, before you do, before you go, while there's 160 people here, go and subscribe right now. Go over there right now and subscribe. Lady Babylon, he's blowing up. He's only got 39 videos with 100. Dude, you're blowing up, dude. You got a thousand, two, thousand and a quarter subs. In just a few months, dude, just to, and, but you're uploading regular videos every twice a week. You're crushing it right now. So everyone right now who's watching, just go over there. This video is over with. You can just go over there right now and subscribe. And, you know, I promise you, this is a, a great resource. You're digging. Look at this. Your views are up. Dude, it's good to see this. It's good to see people are really digging what you're doing because you're going right to the text. You're, you're showing that. Let's go right to the text. Let's not, let's not throw our theories around. Let's go. Let's not. Let's not talk about books that talk about the books that talk about the books that talk about the sources. Let's talk about the source. Let's go right to the sources. 
Love it. That's why I get so horny around you, Neil. I am so <laughs> now. Yeah, my mind right now is like a is like a brothel. It's just it's it's oozing with this oh, smell. I can smell it from here. It's got that stale stench to it. You know what I mean? But yeah. I love that, Neil. Thank you so much. I love that that you're so focused on the on the sources. And let's let's be let's be honest. I mean, I think I don't have anything else really to say. Unless I'm bringing up those sources, you know what I mean? Right. I get, that's why I like your channel so much. You just go right to it, and you can translate it on the spot in in real time. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Rock on. <laughs> all right. Well. All right. I'll talk to you later, Amon. Thank you, brother. Good to see you. All right. Go and subscribe. Go and subscribe. All right. So I want to do uh, get these super chats out real quick. Tomorrow night I have uh Tomorrow night, I got um, Aaron Ra. I'm going to talk to Aaron Ra about some stuff, about some uh, some of the stuff that the Satanic Church is up to. What they're what's what are they doing? What's their what's their ideas? What, what's going on with that? Yellow Psych, thanks for the super chat. What do you think the Kaikion was made up of? I can show you. Let me show you something right now. Carl Ruck did all this research on this. This is the best, the best resource that's out there. Is Kyle Ruck? Here it is. Sacred mushrooms of the goddess. Here, let me share my screen real quick. Sacred mushrooms, secrets of Eleusis. He's got a bunch of books about this, but Kyle A. P. Ruck. Obviously, PhD he used to be a professor, super famous. He's all about the what the Kaikian is made up of, and he says that it's basically wine with fermented grain, so grain that gets moldy. And I don't know if he, I think he says there's a certain psilocybin mushroom that's added in there as well, but there's a whole recipe that they have, and he's he pieces together. It's kind of a mystery. I think we lost most of the text that describe it but he puts it together in his in his research he's really onto that so that's what the kai Kian is i'm pretty sure it's uh it's grain it's like grain that's gone bad mixed with wine and uh psilocybin and probably some other stuff too i, I wouldn't be surprised if they're throwing some mao inhibitors and some ayahuasca roots or some some sort of roots that's has dmt in it i'm i'm that's what i'm guessing because this is, we're talking about states that put people in the life-changing states that changes their life forever. So that's my guess, to be honest. But thanks for that super chat. I appreciate that. It's good. So I should, I should get him back on to talk about that again. Because I want to, that's fascinating stuff. The Eleusinian mysteries are drinking this Kaikion stuff. And then tripping out and meeting gods and having oracles and stuff. Nathan Navarrete, thank you for the super chat. Greek letters are older than Hebrew. How? Thanks. Uh, well, Greek as a language is older than Hebrew. The alphabet, the alphabets, well, it depends because Hebrew is just, Hebrew is using the Phoenician alphabet. So the, the, the modern Greek alphabet is way, way newer than the Greek alphabet. The modern Greek alphabet's not that old at all. But um, the... The, the the archaic Hebrew, which comes out of the Canaanite, you know, um, comes out of that sort of family. Those all come from a, a common source, which is called the Phoenician alphabet, which is all over the Mediterranean. The Greeks even have, the, the before the Greek alphabet, you could see this alphabet being used in Greek with the Greek language. So, and Greek, Greek's way older than Hebrew as far as language is. I don't even know what part of the video. Honestly, I'm not sure what part of the video you're talking about. Probably something Amon said. But uh, yeah, like Israel itself. I mean, Herodotus doesn't even mention Israel in his in his books. He doesn't even. He just gloss. He just talk about. He talks about Lebanon. He talks about talks about uh, Egypt. He talks about the Arabians. It, it's basically just a city state at that point in Jerusalem. He doesn't even mention them. Like he's. And the ancient world, like the, the 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 Israelites, become prominent probably, probably around like the third 
second and third centuries maccabees put them on the map basically that's my that's that's my guess i could be wrong but it seems to me that the maccabees are the ones that put israel on the map as some as like a as a as an as a nation drawing down thank you subscribe to drawing down the stars everybody you you already know it's another good channel bring back the adrogen nice nice obviously thank you for the super chat Jim the Grackle says, is the idea that extreme trauma makes psionics? I have no idea, but something to look into. Uh, probably, I would guess. Thank you for that super chat. I appreciate that. I think there's a couple more. Gnosis Brosis. I love that name, by the way. Just to say thanks for covering butt chugging. <laughs> That's hilarious. That is hilarious. But um, I think that's it. Yeah, that's the last super chat. Everybody, thank you for that. I appreciate it. And like I always say, you have just attained true gnosis. You have just attained true gnosis. The Demiurge has no power over you.